Okay, I wanna take you through the inventory in our minimalist home, so let's jump right in. Dish towels, we have six. Uh, six for like everyday use and then two decorative, about six dish cloths. And then I have one winter coat that I wear for all purposes, one puffy vest, one purse, one pair of dress shoes, one baseball style hat, one winter style hat. Again, this is descriptive, not prescriptive. So this is what works for me. Okay, then let's talk about pots and pans. So I have this one a bigger pot, it has a glass lid. One big frying pan. We have this smaller one that's perfect for just frying a couple of eggs. And then I have one more pot. I think it's, let me grab out the dishwasher. Ooh, it's kind of hot. Uh, and then this pot with a strainer lid. These are our everyday go-tos for pots and pans. I do have a larger stock pot in the basement. And then I also have a Dutch oven that I store down here. And so I'm gonna keep going around telling you how many of each thing we have in our entire house, but even more importantly, how I arrived at these numbers. As far as pot holders, I have two of the glove style and two, oh, that is so dirty. <laughs> We have a baker in our family now. I'm very glad for it, but man, can she get things dirty. Uh, we have two of these and probably most fascinating to people is uh, the number of dishes we have. Okay, so we have one place setting per person. We have six people in our house, so a plate and bowl, and then two extras if we would have company. And so there's eight place settings. And then we also have six kind of regular style glasses. And then Tom uh, really likes drinking from mason jars because you can fit more in it. So we have two of these out as well. And then for coffee mugs, we have six of these. Again, it matches the number in our household plus two extras. Again, these ones hold a little bit more if you wanna make some like a latte or something a little bit fancier. And then we have one water bottle per person and then four travel coffee mugs, so two for each of the adults in the house. Uh, let's go through the utensils real quick and then the bathroom and then I'll tell you how I arrived at these numbers. Okay, so if I haven't lost you already, this is where I really start to lose you balls with our utensils or lack of utensils. One pancake flipper, one of these guys, a ladle, one salad tong, spatulas. That's the big one, right? For the longest time, we only had one spatula. Now we've actually upgraded to two. So one's in the dishwasher. Again, Adeline does a lot of baking now. And so she was like, could we have another spatula? And I'm like, that's totally fine. Prior to that, I was fine with just one. Like it was literally all that I needed. Knives, I'm not sure actually flashing around knives. We have like one chopping knife, one that's more for like bread or that kind of thing. And then a couple smaller paring knives. You know, we have like one of these lemon squeezy things, one garlic press, one of these, a meat pounder thing, and this, and I can do everything in my kitchen. But I'm not a fancy cook. Like the, the season of cooking that we're in right now is very minimal survival. It's not fancy. I make the same things over and over again. I don't apologize for it. And so my kitchen right now is serving the season that we're in and I love it because it makes it really easy to clean and uh, super easy to put stuff away. We also have, I've shown you my magnetic uh, measuring spoons, one set of measuring spoons, one set of measuring cups, and then one liquid measuring cup. I've also really minimized our bakeware. I have a Bundt cake pan, of course. You can still buy our Easy Awesome Bundt cake recipes, recipe book. And then I also have a printable uh, with minimalism by the numbers, if that's helpful for you to see it laid out, to have checklists. And so I'll share more details about that coming up as well. Um, but I have a really pared down baking dishes. And then down under the stove, I have these types of dishes. We have four that are kind of the size or various sizes. And so we actually use these kind of a lot, but the other stuff I don't use. And so I don't need to keep a lot of them. And then for cutting boards, we have two, one, one smaller plastic one that's really convenient to pull out and then a bigger wood one that's a little bit more pain <laughs> to pull out. Okay, so uh, here in the bathroom, we have six uh, regular size bath towels. Again, because there's six people in our household, I don't have any for guests. So I've decided that any towels that are good enough for a guest, like we should also have just as nice of towels. So we're just as worthy <laughs> of having a nice bath towels. And then each bathroom has two hand towels. Total, we have at six washcloths. We have 372 Q-tips. Oh wait, now we only have 372 Q-tips. Are you only using one today or? It all depends what I find, Don. <laughs> oh no, that depends. <laughs> And so obviously there's some things that I don't count and I haven't thought about Q-tips uh, being one of them, but there has been quite a bit of thought and strategy put into how many numbers of each thing that I want to manage in our house. So let's go talk about that for a minute. Okay, so how did we decide 
how many of each thing that we would have. And I went by either count or container. So when it comes to like bath towels, it just made sense to me to have one bath towel per person. And that has worked very well over the last eight years since we highly simplified our home. Now there are some other things like dish towels where I, I didn't know how to put a number around it. And so what I decided to go by was container. So I looked at the drawer where we keep our dish towels and I said, how many comfortably fit in here? And it turns out that you can stack them about two tall, fit two wide, three deep. And so <laughs> with my all of my towels here, I could easily, easily fit about six regular dish towels and then two of these decorative ones and then one stack of these like microfiber dishcloths right there, right? And so I went by container. That is what comfortably fit in the drawer. And so that's how many that we have. In the next drawer is as many plastic bags as fits in that drawer. The next drawer has microfiber cloths. Again, no specific number with those. And the bottom drawer houses as many paper bags as comfortably fits in there. I also use that same logic for like food storage containers. Dedicated one shelf in our cabinet for food storage containers. Uh, as you know, we, we store them with the lid on. If you haven't tried that, you should try that. It it's life changing, right? And so I just keep the number that comfortably fits on that shelf, knowing that most of us have way more food storage containers that we need. What I've learned about myself, again, when I'm trying to decide the inventory for our, our home is that Every single item is inventory that we have to manage. And for most of us as women, we are the, the lead, the chief inventory manager in our house. And so that means that literally every single item of stuff that is in your house is stuff that you have to manage and take care of and put away and clean. Remember that you have it, use it, right? If you don't use it, you're wasting money and then we feel guilty about it. So every single item in my home is inventory that I have to manage. And what I know about myself as a naturally messy person, I prefer creative, right? But as a naturally messy person is that when the inventory creeps up and when life gets a little chaotic, that is the recipe for our house to be a disaster again. But by having low inventory, even when life ramps up and it gets a little wild, I can still manage our home because I have been so intentional about the amount of inventory that we have in here. So I've said this before and I will say it again. There's nothing wrong with you. You're not lazy. You're not unmotivated. You're not a bad housekeeper. You're not a bad mom. You're not a bad wife. You are just trying to manage way too much inventory. And here is what has really blown my mind. And we're going to go through, I'll take you through some more inventory in our house. Here is what is mind blowing to me is how little inventory I can actually manage in our house. I wouldn't have ever thought that we'd only have six glasses and one place setting per person and one towel. I would have thought I'm a fairly competent person, right? I could manage much more than that, right? And the truth is, I can't. If I want our house to stay neat and tidy and feel like a peaceful place to be, uh, have it be where it's really easy for the kids to pitch in and help, have them feel peaceful in our home and creative and, and not always agitated, it, it's very low inventory. And again, that's just me, but that's the beauty of this is that you get to match the inventory in your house to your current season of life. And so you get to decide what is best for you. I just wanna encourage you that it might be a lot lower <laughs> than what you're initially thinking, but don't worry about that because you get to this point and it's so awesome. You don't miss any of this stuff. Oh my goodness. Now I've been doing this for eight years. So I've built up my decluttering muscles. It's, it's, it is fairly easy for me, but don't worry. It really does get a lot easier and the benefits are just too good to pass up. Okay, so for bedding and linens, everyone has one comforter, is that what you call it? Like bedspread <laughs> for their beds. And then we have, uh, Tom and I each have like one throw per person. The kids each have like two throw blankets because they've gotten them for gifts or various things and it's it's totally fine. Probably one area I go a little more overboard on are throw pillows. Even though we try to maintain like a minimalist home, I still want our home to feel cozy and inviting and warm. And so I feel like throw pillows 
LOs help accomplish that. And I'm okay managing a little more inventory in that area. And I know sometimes people will be like, well, what about an emergency if you lost power or something like that? We do have extra bedding in our campers. And so we could always pull stuff in from there. But with the extra throw blankets, it's not something that we're generally concerned about. And then as far as sheets, each bed in our house has one set of sheets. And then we have one extra queen set and one extra twin set. And I know, again, the question comes up, but like, well, what if you have like this great sickness go through your house? I like to launder everything right away if that were to happen. And so if someone has to sleep on a bath towel or a throw blanket or something like that until their sheets go through the laundry, it's just, it really is not a big deal. And so that has worked very, really well for me, again, because I'm trying to manage as little inventory as possible. What I have learned is that time and life flies by. <laughs> and so uh, I hear from those of you who are further down the path in life that it just keeps going faster, right? Time just keeps going faster and not the opposite way. We think like, oh, when the kids are older, they moved out or I retire, I'm going to have all of this time on my hands and then I'm going to use all of this stuff that I've acquired. And the truth is, is that it just never comes for most of us by and large. And so I'm going to keep my inventory low now, travel light, and free up the extra bandwidth and energy and stress <laughs> that comes from trying to manage too much stuff. And actually, let's talk about clothes real quick before we leave this room because just uh, recently, earlier this year, I laid out my full wardrobe on our bed as well. And I have five dress tops, five pairs of nice pants, and then five around the house tops, um, a couple pairs of leggings that I wear around the house. I have a very limited wardrobe, but again, uh, most of us are actually already minimalist when it comes to our clothing. You wear the same things over and over again. You just have them surrounded by all of these other clothes that you don't wear and that you pass over and that you don't feel good in and you kind of regret buying, but you think the only way to make that buying decision right is to keep it and wear it. And so I've just been willing to move all that extra stuff out and just leave the stuff I wear every single day that fits and then I feel good in but I have other videos on simplifying your wardrobe. So I'll link to those down below. If you're interested in that, I don't miss any of it. Any of the stuff that I got rid of, this is not living sacrificially. So let's go down our, the door to the basement is in this room. I know this room's kind of wonky, um, but let's go down there and I'll show you how much I keep in storage as well, because that is also quite limited. Okay. So our, our basement is kind of like our main storage space. What is fascinating to me is how much I used to keep in storage that I never used ever again. It was just like this guilt. It was all this like deferred decisions, stuff I thought I would use uh, when again, when another season of life came and I was never using it. So I just decided to let that stuff go. My main criteria for decluttering in our house was, am I using it now or will I for sure use it in the upcoming year? And if I couldn't say yes to the, one of those two questions, I decided as kind of a great experiment <laughs> to let that stuff go. And I'm here to tell you that I miss none of it, none of it. So in our basement, we keep very limited storage. Most of the things are things that I'm, I'm fairly confident that we will use in the upcoming year. And so I have one bin for Christmas, one bin for like extra backpacks and overnight bags, one bin for extra shoes, one bin for extra clothes or out of season clothes. And I really use these as containers to limit how much I keep. I have a couple bins for extra kitchen stuff that doesn't fit easily in our kitchen. Our kitchen upstairs is very small. Um, so I like keeping some of this down here. I have bins for for extra winter stuff for the kids and also like a bin for Operation Christmas Child. We throw some stuff in there throughout the year. Uh, party supplies, life jackets, hunting stuff for Tom. And I mean, like this literally is the bulk of our storage. Like this is most of it. And then we, like behind me, we have these bins that are more of like plumbing and electrical and you know, Tom's very handy. So that kind of stuff that he might use, painting stuff. So kind of the more hardware stuff of our house. But um, Tom keeps some stuff in the garage for like his tools and stuff. But for me, for storage, this is the bulk of it. I've had to let a lot of my hobby stuff go sewing and craft projects because it caused me a lot of guilt. I would see these unfinished projects and think like, oh no, you wasted money on that. Oh no, you need to finish that. And and um, I've just learned that this season of life, I don't have time for that stuff. I do have some videos where I've simplified these spaces and kind of some of the logic that I used to talk myself through. I'm not saying it's always easy to let go of this stuff, but I can't believe how much more peaceful and how much better our house feels now since I was willing to let that stuff go. Now here in the bathroom where I get ready, I very much use the container concept. So I just keep what comfortably fits in my few drawers and underneath the sink. 
Now, for me, it comfortably fits has evolved over the years. I like drawers and cabinets that are only about half full because I find that it's much easier to put stuff away and there is a higher likelihood that I will actually put stuff away. <laughs> Now adjacent to here is our laundry room where Tom keeps his clothes. Again, our house is a little wonky <laughs> at times, but whereas I use count for my clothing and I had a specific number that I was trying to adhere to, he uses the containers as guidelines in here as well. So he just keeps what fits in his bins and in his dresser and that works great for him. Now it's a little harder to quantify the numbers of things in our living spaces. It really depends how much space you have, but something that I have limited is the number of flat surfaces in these areas. So we have one coffee table and no end tables or side tables, but we really don't eat or drink in this room. And so we don't miss them, but by having fewer flat surfaces, there's less area to collect stuff that then I have to clean off. So having just one table in this room works really well for us. All right, let's go controversial again and talk about books. So I know myself now and I have this one basket that fits under our bed and then I usually have one or two on the side table next to my chair in here. We're all impacted differently by the messages that our stuff sends us. And for me, I feel that same sense of like FOMO or fear of missing out. If I have more books then I have time to read them and learn from them. And so I try to keep it pared down to just this basket. If it starts to fill up, then I'll go through, especially like towards the bottom and donate or pass on ones that I'm not using anymore. And for me, this is a great boundary or limit to how many books that I keep. Now, I recently talked about kids toys in a video we just did where we did our deep decluttering clean of this bedroom. So as they get older, I wanna teach them how to manage their own inventory. And we go through that in that video. But for kids toys, just remember to keep it very simple kids are minimalists at heart, really, I believe, and they thrive in highly simplified environments. And I'm obviously not going through every single item in our house, but I think you can start to see my logic of count or container. I'm either gonna keep what comfortably fits in this container or a certain number based on the number of people in our household. And so those have been really helpful tools to me, but I know I sometimes struggle to put to words like how good our house feels now. And I have videos on the silent to-do list and about how our things are talking <laughs> To us and again having a clean house doesn't make us a good person or a bad person but I have noticed for myself that I am very sensitive to my surroundings and I feel better when our house is picked up and tidied up and so last fall we created the easy awesome bunt cake recipe book and uh, we took donations for it to support Dorothy's house down in Mexico we raised over $80,000 for her and the well is installed and now they're working on getting all the infrastructure in place for it to go to their facility where they help women out of really difficult situations so over $80,000 Thank you so much. It's still available if you would like to buy it for $5. And now uh, we're switching our focus to Casa Shalom, which is an orphanage down in Guatemala. So the couple that uh, runs it actually goes to our church. And so we said, hey, we would love to partner with you. Is there any project we could help you with that would make a big difference to the lives of the children down at Casa Shalom? So they had kind of this dream of installing solar because that would free up $1,000 a month in their budget that they could use to hire more counselors to work with the kids that they are taking in there. And so all the proceeds now from Easy Awesome Bun Cakes is gonna go to Casa Shalom. And then we also did come up with this printable of minimalism by the numbers that literally goes through our whole house. And we broke it down the numbers by minimalist, simple living and cozy. <laughs> so I understand that not everybody wants to be a full out minimalist. Um, and that is totally fine, honestly, totally fine, right? And so we break it down um, kind of depending on how far you want to go, but it can be really helpful. There's also columns for you to put in your own numbers and your goals for your own house. And so it can be a really helpful worksheet, especially for those of you who really like the numbers, <laughs> right? So that's also available for $5. If you wanna make a bigger donation, you're welcome to do that as well. So I'll put all the details for that down below as well. But thank you in advance for partnering with us. I just think of these kids down in Guatemala who uh, will never get to meet most likely, right? But for them to know that there are other people in the world who care about them and are investing in them, I just think that is so cool. So thank you again in advance for that. All right, well, I'm gonna wrap this up now, but thank you so much for watching. And like I said, I'll link to some of those other videos on clothing and, and storage areas if you're hoping to simplify those in your own home as well, because it makes such a huge difference. And I did touch on it before, but this in no way feels like we're living sacrificially. Um, it feels like how we were meant to live. We're not meant to be stuff managers, right? We, I, it feels like we're meant to manage very little so that we can focus on other things that are more important to us. All right, I love you. I hope you have a really good day and I'll see you again soon.